Hey everybody, it's Cameron Tim, and I'm going to show you how to automatically reorder sources in OBS and stuff. <sighs> Refer a link in the description. You know where to find me when I'm live. Hit that follow button on the Twitch thing to see when I'm live. As long as the bell's ticked and everything. You know the drill. I don't know how to do content, what am I doing? Now the purpose of this tutorial is for you to be able to reorder your sources within any scene in OBS. And if you stream on Twitch, this can be triggered by any sort of chat message, Twitch alert, or whatever you'd like. If you do stream on YouTube or some other platform, you will have to physically click a button in a deck. This also works on both PC and Mac, but there's an additional step you have to do on Mac, which I'll link a tutorial in the description for. The first thing we want to do is download DaVinci Resolve. <laughs> Gotcha. So first you're going to want to download the OBS WebSocket, and this basically allows for any external software to control OBS. Make sure you have OBS closed when you're installing these plugins as well. So we'll go ahead and go into the OBS WebSocket plugin, go to download, and when you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see the Windows installer or Mac if you're on a Mac. Go ahead and download that installer. And once you run through it, click next, install, and run through the process. I already have it installed, so I'm not going to run it again, but it's pretty self-explanatory. The next thing we need to install is Leorn Board. So if you search Leorn Board on Google and then click on the first result and then go to download, you just download the latest version from here. Once that downloads, you'll get a zip file like so. You can just extract it all and place the folder wherever you'd like. It doesn't really matter where. So the first thing we need to do is open up the receiver. So let's go ahead and open up the onboard receiver. It's gonna say Windows protect your PC, yada yada. It's a completely safe software, don't worry. Just have it run it anyways. Once it opens, you're gonna see Welcome to the Onboard Receiver. Do you wish to go through tutorial? Hit no. You're gonna see all these settings. You don't really need to change any of this unless you want it to automatically connect to OBS or Twitch, which is up to personal preference. And then you just change your frame per second to whatever you usually stream at. For me, it's 30. For a lot of people, it's probably 60. Once you do that, just hit accept. And then once you try to connect to OBS, It'll bring this up, and once this is done, that means you're successfully connected to OBS. If it says something about it can't authenticate, then that's probably because enable authentication is enabled, and you'd want to uncheck this. And it'll give you a warning saying, oh, people can hack you and stuff. Like, don't worry about it. Unless you want to manually enter the authentication key, that's fine too. So the first thing we need to do here is go ahead and add a new deck, and that's going to create a new one. So when you open it up, this is what it's going to look like. And to create a new button, you're just simply going to click on this space anywhere really and create a blank button you can right click it and change what it's called uh, for this example i'm going to be calling this desktop capture one and this is where all the magic is going to happen so i'm going to right click on this and i'm going to hit add commands now the way that the source reordering works is you can't just pick a source and move it up or move it down, that functionality doesn't exist. But there's a specific WebSocket command that allows us to reorder all of our sources within a specific scene. And to show you how this works, I have a template filled out here. And it looks kind of confusing, but essentially all you really need to know is this is the scene name. So this is where we're going to specify what scene this effect is going to happen in. So I'm going to go ahead and put display captures so that it matches this like so. And then items are your sources. And then everything within these two brackets here are going to be all of your sources. And every single source has to be included in this, otherwise this effect won't work. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in the names of these sources here. And then to add additional sources, I'll just copy from this comma to this bracket here and just paste. And I'm going to call this DC3. And now I have all of them in here. And one thing to take note is the order that you put the items is the way they will appear in OBS from top to bottom. This, at the very end, you don't really need to change. The request type just tells OBS WebSocket what command it's going to trigger, and this specifies which command it is. And then message ID is usually if you want to have a pop-up show up or something else, usually you don't need to change this. So what we're going to do now that we have this complete command here, we're going to highlight it all and copy it. And then we're going to click on this plus in the Leorn board receiver and this adds a command. And what we're going to do is click on this command here and we're going to type custom packet. So we're going to add that and it's literally just one command line. And all we have to do is click inside of it, press control A or command A on a Mac to highlight it all. And so we can overwrite it and we're going to paste the command here. So we're going to hit done, done. Anytime you want to save all your progress that you've made in the Orange board, you have to hit both Duns, otherwise it won't save. So now, in order to use this button, we have to open up the Stream Deck. So we need to go back into this folder and actually open up the Stream Deck 
on your PC. And it's going to give you the same message, run anyway. And we're going to have this physical stream deck pulled up and we're going to select the deck that we created, which is in the order number of six. And you can always double check it here. So once we hit connect, you'll see the button show up here. So now we can go ahead and click on DC one and you see it moves it like so. Now let's make some more commands here. Now we notice it only moves them, but it doesn't really do anything else. So what we need to do, if we're going to put the display capture one on top, is we need to add some source visibility. So we're gonna make a new command and then just type source and you'll just see it right here, source change visibility. We're going to click on the scene name, display captures, and then we're going to click on DC one and then visible, we want it to be true so that it turns on. And then additionally, we want these other two to be off. So we're going to copy the source change visibility, paste it twice. And then on this, we will just change the item to two and three and then change visible to false so that it turns it off. Now, the great thing with OBS 27 is they have an additional feature where you can add transitions to the sources. So I added a half second fade on each of these sources so that when they pop up, they can just fade on. So that means we want to wait half a second before turning the other ones off so that it doesn't just cut to black when the other one fades on. So what we're going to do is add a half second delay here by adding 500 milliseconds. So when I hit done and done, and then go back to my stream deck and click on this. Now we see the source fade on and the other waits till the fade is done to turn off. Now we want to be able to do it for all three of them and reorder each one. So now what we can do is right click here and we can copy this button and we can paste and we will paste again and we can change the text. We're going to make this one DC two and we're going to make this one DC three. And then all we have to do is just go into here and edit commands. And what we want to do is change the order of these sources. So we can put DC two on top and DC one in the middle. Don't need to change DC three. And then all we need to do here is change DC two's visibility to true and DC one's visibility to false and change the delay to zero on the DC two and change the delay on DC one to 500. And then we'll do the same thing with the third one. Done, done. And you can see it automatically added those buttons. So now whenever we trigger any of these, you can see it reorders them and makes them fade. So it looks like a scene transition when in reality, it's literally just source reordering and changing visibility. And that's pretty much how you do it. Now the great thing with this is you can bring this scene into any other scene so that you don't have to make a bunch of commands or a bunch of different sources every single time you want to do this type of effect. And to show you what that looks like is I have this other scene here with the display capture scene inside of it. All you have to do to add that is just go to your sources and add the scene itself. And once you add that, you can see here that the source transition still works because it's all still self-contained in the display capture scene. Hi, Future Tim here. I just wanted to add this quick note. I'm not even turning my camera on, so suck it, get over it, don't cry. You're crying, I see those tears. Stop it, it's embarrassing. So I know I'm gonna get this question, uh, how do you bind it to hotkeys? Um, it's actually relatively simple, but not necessarily straightforward. So once you go into your deck where you have your buttons set up, you, once you right click, you can see the button ID here at the bottom for each of these. And then all you have to do is just go into trigger shortcut. You'll see a pop-up that says, if this is your first time here, this probably doesn't do what you think it does. Don't worry about that. All you have to do is just click on this plus button, add a keyboard, a bind, press a key. Like let's say I've used the number one and then I use that button ID accordingly. And then that'll trigger the button when you have the stream deck open. So I just wanted to add that quick note in case anybody was wondering. There's so many other really cool things that you can do with this and it alleviates a huge mess of having a bunch of different sources duplicated over and over again, or having a bunch of different scenes for very specific things. This makes your OBS a lot cleaner and allows for a lot easier maneuverability throughout your scenes. So hopefully this tutorial was useful. If you run into any issues or have any questions, please feel free to ask me in the comments. And 
And if you want to see a lot more Leorn board type content where you can do so many other things that you didn't even imagine you could probably could do in OBS, I highly suggest Andy Lippy. He has amazing tutorials for Leorn board and doing really cool different stream stuff. And I also highly suggest his website Stream Up for specific Leorn board or OBS plugins and extensions to really spice up a lot of aspects of your stream. Well, first video in the new office. I'd say that was decent. This is Camera Tim signing out. It's a lot harder to do on carpet.